Ross, it's great to see you again. I think we bumped into each other at uh, one of the first IBM Thinks that was back in person again. I, I love that venue, by the way. Um, but we're here in Albany right now uh, talking. We're on kind of this IBM road tour, uh, talking about the future of computing and really getting underneath of what IBM is doing, looking at your top to bottom approach. And, and here we are. So it's, it's great to see you. Thanks, Pat. It's great to see you too. And I love being here in Albany. This is uh, the researchers and scientists here really make a difference for the future of my, of my platform, yeah. the Z platform. And so it's great to be in this setting and to see both of you here today. Yeah, the road to Albany is beautiful. It's very green, very lush. If you haven't been here, I think people uh, should probably visit sometime. Uh, but yeah, you know, we, we've had a chance to speak to you and now and a number of your colleagues. And we're really kind of looking at this future of compute narrative and this full stack story. And IBM has such an interesting, compelling story. It's There's so much history and then obviously so much innovation going on. And I want to start there with you, Ross. You know, we just got finished. We talked to Mikesh, uh, looking at the whole kind of semiconductor research part of the business, where that's heading. And of course, you leading a big part of the, the systems business and IBM Z. Um, I, I want to kind of talk about how what we talked with Nikesh about with the semiconductor and the research and how that really informs and drives the business in systems for you. So we've had a very long, decades long partnership with IBM Research. And yes, it is around the silicon, it is around the chips, it is around fundamental computing paradigms. Um, and, and research is really, I mean, I would say they're an essential part of the Z business. And, um, and one of the things I know that heterogeneous computing and full stack integration is coming into vogue now, but uh, that's something, you know, the mainframe platform has basically taken advantage of for decades. And it does start at the, at the silicon um, because the fundamental performance, reliability, and security of the system is baked in from the chip, the packaging, to the central electronics complex, and including the memory operating system, right? I can, I can stack it up, right? Um, but again, research is fundamental to most layers of the Z system. And uh, in, in the re again, back to, back to semiconductors, um, what research has been able to push for us, not only in terms of density, and speed of circuitry and things that you know allow you to pack more horsepower and more capabilities into a smaller area but also some fundamental breakthroughs like around security like post quantum crypto right and right. Uh, we've seen the recent nist announcement it was really thrilling that all four of the first accepted algorithms had ibm researchers participating in them and two of them were led by ibm so but that type of partnership and leveraging of innovation is key to my business. And I love the fact that research is looking five, 10, 15, 20 years down the pike. They're solving hard problems with us for our clients, even before our clients run into those problems, so to speak. So I think that's, a, that's, a, that's one of the great things. And again, to me, it, all, it all really all starts at the semiconductor yeah, it's a great time right now. I mean, for, for I would say, if I could look back 20 years ago, people were talking about semiconductors uh, being this commodity, <laughs> right? And I've always been a, a big believer that uh, people allow themselves to be commoditized. And here we are now where I think everybody knows what a semiconductor is. And uh, I've always loved um, your fit for purpose approach that seems to be in vogue right now. <laughs> so I don't know if you started the trend uh, or, or you showed people how it could be done, but a lot of companies have jumped on the bandwagon and, and here we are talking about this. Uh, one other thing that people might not know as well is that uh, IBM Z in the mainframe is very much cloud enabled. Your clients obviously know this. Um, but a lot of people don't. So I'm, I'm curious though, how does Z fit into the overall IBM cloud story? So I think we fit very, very well, I'm happy to say. I mean, you can take cloud at different layers of the stack again. Um, you could take it, I would say, at the highest layer, layer where we have IBM mainframes and IBM power systems yeah. integrated into the, fully integrated into the virtual private layers of of the IBM public cloud so that you can access a mainframe capability, but through 
a, a PaaS service, right? To, through a web service. Right. In fact, you have a big time security service. That's right. That's right. In particular, what clients want is they want to keep their own crypto keys. They don't want anyone else touching them. And um, the mainframe has, the, I would say, the best cryptographic capability of any system in the world. And so by putting some mainframes in the IBM public cloud, all the services, whether they're running, they're not necessarily running on the mainframe, they might be running VMs on, on x86, right. but they're accessing those crypto services. So again, at the highest level, you know, the mainframe integrates well with the cloud, but then there's all different layers that I would say that are just as important in a multi-cloud, hybrid cloud world, um, connecting applications via something, a common platform like Red Hat OpenShift, right? And, and having containers be the be more of a fundamental way to develop applications, not just for portability, but I would say for better manageability, being more agile. And the mainframe integrates with every key Red Hat product into the OpenShift stack. And again, there's layer after layer at middleware layer, at at service layer like 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 a Kubernetes OpenShift layer down down deeper. We're integrated all the way. And you know, IBM has two strategies really that we talk about at the highest level, hybrid cloud and AI. And we're integrating at all levels on both of those. Okay. Real quick, wait, are you telling me that the the IBM systems can they they, they run Linux and they run containers and you can address them in the public cloud and they're part of a complete hybrid cloud architecture. I'm, I'm being a little snarky, yeah. of course, but it's like yes. not Absolutely. enough people know this, uh, but I think it's a, a real testament to a lot of the success that, that you've been having over the, over the past few years. Thanks, and, and our clients have been telling us, have been telling me that they want us to better integrate. And again, with some common software platforms, that's been very easy. We've also, though, we always have to, Put a little bit of the mainframe into what we do if something does become distributed, like say the security model and things like that. Because uh, again, our clients are, are in, especially the ones in regulated industries, are basically they're they're counting on the highest level possible of security that our systems have for their for their applications and their data. Yeah. You know, something interesting that we had the chance to speak about in uh, you know one of our briefings and interactions, Ross was sort of how the chip technology has advanced so much, the design, the packaging, you know, mm -hmm. to be able to do more on chip. And, uh, you know, in your newest Z16 iteration, this sort of ties into the whole hybrid story that we're trying mm -hmm. to tell here, though, you brought AI much closer. Right. I just kind of, you know, is that a great example in your mind, though, of sort of how the relationship with research and systems and how you develop products, is that maybe like a concrete example in this most recent generation of what's really happening in that, re in yeah, that relationship? Yeah, I, th I think it's a fantastic example because um, research had been, do been looking at AI and doing AI silicon for a number of years. And they were doing test beds and demonstrations. And we saw one of the engines that they had built and it just, it, it dawned on some of uh, our lead technical folks about six years ago that what if we were to actually embed an inference engine, an inference yeah. accelerator right onto the microprocessor, kind of like on a different side of the bus than everybody else has AI implemented? What, would, what could we change? And so research worked with us and it was actually their logic for the AI inference engine that we took and then we adapted it and made it, made it really robust and a lot of error checking and all that as you would expect in a mainframe and integrated it onto silicon and so now we can do things that no other system can do. You know, with guaranteed a millisecond or less latency, we can do 300 billion inferences a day on one system, on one mainframe system. So we're bringing high performance, low latency inferencing into the decision process of something like a transaction that a bank or a payment company might do. Game changing. Uh, when we die, by the way, the I guess the fancy word we use that for anything that's not let's say a general purpose CPU is heterogeneous computing. Uh, you talked about uh, AI acceleration, but you do a lot more too, right? You have crypto, you have FPGAs. You were doing uh, ASICs before it was cool, okay? <laughs> uh, now it's, it, it's cool too, but let's dial out a little bit. How is, this imp how is this changing the way that you're recommending your clients look at the overall estate of their enterprise architecture? Well, um, 
It's in, in, in a number of ways, but I would say one that's really fundamental to what they do today is, do you know, they're, they use the mainframe for a transactional engine and the operational data that's created is really core business data that's relevant for many uses within a, within a business after it's created. And so, you know, the two decades ago, or, or maybe more people were started copying the data off the mainframe because they didn't think they could do things like advanced analytics or AI on a mainframe. So they'd copy it off. When you copy data, you open up a security risk because you now have multiple copies of usually highly valuable data. It's, there's complexity, there's cost to it. And one of the things and clients are saying, we're saying is we want to be able to use this data more real time. Right. So that means as opposed to copying it off and processing, post-processing, let's do more real time. And that's what, again, the partnership with research, listening to clients, and then trying to bring the value of the integrated stack back to the integrated stack right to the middle of our clients' businesses. And we're, we're doing that. That's great. Yeah, there's a lot of excitement here. Clearly, this, this most recent cycle has shown a lot of momentum. It's always very interesting. And Pat, I think you'd share my sentiment to sort of hear how these different threads come together, how the research, you and I always talk about how we need more R and not just <laughs> D. Yeah. And there's a lot of that going on here um, in Albany where we're talking, Ross. And of course, it's always great to sit down with you. Thanks so much for your time. Absolutely. Yeah, I appreciate Thanks, it. Dan. This is, I think you're... Yeah, you did the 6.5 Summit uh, mm -hmm. uh, two years, so yep. you're not a newcomer, but here we are again, 6.5 on the road in Albany. We'll be back. Yep. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thank yep. you.